Hi, and welcome to this week's Life Lessons video. It's great to be back with you all. Do you struggle to fully relax and unwind? Maybe even when you have time off or you're on holiday, you're always doing something. So you're always looking for reasons to be busy, always looking for reasons to be on the go. And so you don't give your mind and body the rest and relaxation that it desperately needs. And so you end up tired, overworked, overwhelmed and burnt out. Well, in this video, we're going to be sharing with you the telltale signs that you're on the burnout treadmill and what's really driving this unwillingness to just relax, pause and rest. And most importantly, we're going to be explaining how you can finally stop this bad habit, finally rest, finally relax and recharge and experience deep and lasting inner peace and calm. Welcome to our Wu Wei Wisdom Life Lessons series. In each episode, we answer your questions, reveal the powerful life lesson, and offer you lots of practical tips and advice to help you live in balance, harmony, and flow. Okay, David, so the question we've had in on this topic is, I struggle with sitting down and just relaxing. I'm always on the go and seem to have an endless list of jobs I need to do. Even when I give myself time off, I find myself planning things I need to do in the future. I'm tired and totally worn out. How do I get over the constant busyness that I create for myself? Right, well, <laughs> this is, as you could imagine, uh, this is a very common situation I work with my clients with. It seems to be more getting more frequent now as well. It's, it's been through all my career, but the last, I think the last five years, it's getting more. It's got lots of names. Um, they call it kind of emotional distress. They call it burnout. They call it ME. They, they give it lots of names. Because I think one of the difficulties, it's so hard to pin down. It's not one one reason. So they'll go and do blood tests, they'll look at their diet, they'll look at several things. And it may well be all of those things that's, con that's contributing. And when I'm working with my clients, I, I can almost guarantee it nearly always has an emotional basis as well. So it's very important to have a look at the emotional issues that we discuss mm -hmm. every week here to really get to the core of what may be, what may be going on with this burnout. Mm -hmm. So what you're saying, David, is that experiencing a kind of overwhelming sense of fatigue, yep. burnout, tiredness, no energy, no energy um, but then on the flip side, a kind of almost like a fidgetiness that you can't relax. You're always uptight. You're always thinking, 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 overthinking about stuff. I mean, it's our classic, what we call the carousel of despair. Some people call it the treadmill. That's what my clients normally say. It's like I'm on a treadmill and the treadmill keeps going faster. And the faster I go, the faster the treadmills go. We sometimes call it the hamster's wheel. And it's almost like all parts of their life is, is like this. And it's not only, you know, in one part in their home life. It could be their business. It could be in mm -hmm. relationships. It could be the way they're looking after themselves. It could result in poor sleep, no exercise, hasn't got time, o always a big to-do list and no time to do. This mm -hmm. is one of the things that I constantly hear. But I've heard this for a long time because I've been doing this type of work for 40 years now. But I do think it's getting worse now. Yeah. I, do, I, I, I hear it more and more and more and constantly working with clients where they've gone to Western medicine and they can't find a solution. Because, you know, as I said, they'll do blood tests, they'll look at their diet, and all of these are important. I'm not saying they're not important. But I believe the real kind of key that you have to get down is to understand the emotional drivers that yeah. we talk about as all the time. Okay, so David, if we are struggling with this sense of fatigue, we, that we just can't relax, even though we want to, there's something kind of stopping us, or that we're more tired than we believe we should be. 
Um, I agree with you. There's probably several things going yeah. on, and there is that mind-body interface. So if yeah. there is, if it's caused by emotional issues, they of course will be impacting the physical, yeah. which will then be impacting the yeah. emotional, and then that becomes this carousel of despair that we talk about. But but but, but, but can I say that's important? That's why you should go to your doctor and GP first and have all the blood tests, mm -hmm. have all the iron deficiency stuff sorted out. Because it could just be that, and if it's that, then that will change it. But after doing all of that, you're still going round the same hamster's wheel or treadmill. Yeah. Then that's evidence that there's something much deeper that's going on that are more complicated, to be honest. Don't think this is easy. This is what I say to my clients. Don't think this is mm -hmm. easy. This is a very complicated te technique that nearly always, not every case, but nearly always will go back to the inner child mm -hmm. work. And, you know, we've done lots of videos as on the inner child work. It might be worth you having a look at. But it's a complicated sit situation. And I think to resolve this is not one solution. This yeah. is the problem, yeah. the solutions on many levels. So we obviously, in our specialism, we talk about emotional Emotion. health. So yeah. we're, we're obviously we're going to focus this right. uh, video on emotional health issues, emotional health triggers. So we will we'll be separating, separating out nutrition and everything like that because that is not our area of expertise. But in terms of emotional health, what drives this burnout? You mentioned the oh. inner child. So what about, for me, I can relate to this. So for me, it's a kind of driver. I, I struggle with giving myself time off. I want to keep myself busy for, sometimes I wonder for busyness sake. So I do wonder what what's kind of driving that? Well, again, that's why I say it's, <laughs> it's, com it's complicated. It's not a straightforward um, one, two, three. I will, I will say this is really where the golden thread will really, really help you. And again, we've done videos on the golden thread. So starting at the top. So if you're uh, exhausted, fatigued, lethargic, can't be, can't be faced to do things, that's where we start. And then it's why, 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 as we've demonstrated. You do the golden thread. What are the common reasons, as, as Alex was saying? It normally, my experience, is normally goes down to childhood. It can be all the stuff we talk about, trying to please people, looking externally for, va for validation, wanting praise of people, wanting reassurance of, of people, wanting people to pat you on the back and saying, we're really proud of you, you're doing a great job, you're really, wor you're really worthy. So you're looking for that external validation that never comes or never has come. And so that creates this carousel of mm -hmm. despair. You work harder and harder and harder. And as I've said on many videos, it's, I always think about it when I'm working with my client. It's like a high jump bar. And they set the high jump bar. And the minute they jump over the bar, they say, well, that jump bar must have been too low. And they raise yeah, the bar okay. again. And they raise the bar and they raise the bar until they can't jump over it. And then they get so fatigued on trying to hit mm -hmm. these levels that they can never reach because they're trying to get external validation rather than seeking internal validation. So I think the perfection thing comes into <clears throat> yep. this, wanting to be perfect. Yes. So wanting to be perfect, therefore <clears throat> I've got to, I'm setting high standard for myself, um, uh, what I achieve, what I manage to get done, whether it's in my career or my family life, home life, personal life with friends, whatever. If I have this belief that I need to be perfect to prove myself, to be good enough, <laughs> to be well, lovable. See, and I would challenge yeah, yeah, all of those. Yeah, all of those, then that is will drive my need for busyness. It will drive it will stop me from just pausing, accepting where I'm at, and just taking the rest and relaxation that I know I need. Okay. And I'll give you another <laughs> one. Just working with a, a beautiful client now, and when we do the golden thread and we go down to the root and we sort it out back in her childhood, I am responsible. This is what she said. I am responsible. And I said, for what? <laughs> she said, for everything. I'm responsible for the house. I'm responsible for my career. I'm responsible for my children. I'm responsible for my parents. I'm responsible for the next door neighbor. I'm responsible for the dog. And she, I had to stop her. She went through, uh, 
after about 10, all the things that she's responsible. And then she said this classic thing. Can you relate to this? David, it's like spinning plates. Mm. You know the one that's spinning plates? As one goes off, you run over to the other one. And she said, that's what my life is like. I'm constantly spinning plates. I said, well, no wonder you're tired. And she said, exactly. Mm -hmm. How can I take a rest? How can I take some time for myself? Because what's most important for me is looking after everyone else, Mm -hmm. is making sure that they're all right. And I said, who gave you that job? Who gave you that responsibility? And she never answered me. She said, I don't know. I don't know where that came from. She said, I think it was my parents. And I said, but your parents aren't around now. She said, no, but I've still got that belief system. And that's when I'm talking all in these videos. Please, please, please take responsibility for your belief system because your belief system is the driver. It's the sat nav, the computer program that's driving your life. I know you consciously are not aware of it, but it's driving your life. And that's what the golden thread does. It goes from the conscious mind. She doesn't wake up every morning, open her eyes and say, well, this is another day. Well, I'm responsible for everybody. But that's her belief. Mm -hmm. And that drives her. And you can't change what you don't understand. So that's why you've Mm -hmm. got to get down to that core belief system. Because until my client changes that core belief system, And it sounds easy, doesn't it? I know it's not easy because you have to understand it. You have to understand where it came from, why you put it into place, what is driving and for you to hold on, what are the benefits that you are getting from it. And my clients will say, there's no benefits, but there is a benefit. There's a payoff. There's a payoff for you. And you have to understand that before you can change it. And this is why being emotionally (laughs) self-responsible, my goodness, I talk about it each week, Mm -hmm. taking self-responsibility for your emotions. Stop looking externally for this, this patting, this stroking, this, this praise, this reassurance, this validation. This is where it goes wrong because you are moving your energy out. And instead of looking after yourself, you're trying to please other people, the, the great unknown to tell you that you're worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. You don't have to earn worthiness. You've got to stop this way of thinking. It's a nonsense. You are not born unworthy and then have to earn it. You are worthy. You are enough. You can cope. You've always coped. You are lovable. Everyone is. You do not earn it. And I think from a lot of my clients, this is the treadmill. Yeah. And I think, David, what you've just said about this idea of roles, assumed roles and responsibilities, we that is a massive, massive driver for people in terms of keeping them on this constant busyness treadmill. And and we've done a video on self-identity, and I'll put a link to that as well, which is worth watching because it talks about these false roles we create for ourselves to justify our own self-worth. So, because I'm sure there'll be people watching this video say, well, you know, I'm not imagining all this busyness. I'm not just creating it for the sake of it, David. I actually have too much to do. I can't rest and relax because I've got so much to do. But what I guess what you're saying is, yes, they are actual things you have to do, but you've given yourself too much to do because of the amount you've taken on, because of the roles you've assumed. And you've assumed these roles either because you've done it unquestioning, unquestioningly from something that's been given to you in childhood or because you wanted to try and prove yourself to be the best boss, to have the best business, to have the best career, to have to be the best father, to be the best mother, to be the best friend. And so you've assumed these roles, which meant because you want to be great or perfect in these roles, you are now taking on too much. I think I think that that's the thing. So, so many people, and there is a role again, I said it was complicated. There is a role to think about, you know, how you set out your day, keeping an 
a diary, keeping a calendar, setting yourself tasks, giving yourself a reasonable amount of time to set the task. And I've got a client, I, I, we, she said, well, I don't know how to do that. And I said, OK, which is time management. Let's sit down and think about it. I'll show you how to do time management. And then she said this classic word, I haven't got time to do time management. <laughs> <laughs> it, this, this is a carousel of despair. Yeah. And it says you haven't got time to set out, I don't know, if you're doing a job, how long did it take? Oh, she said, no, no, I haven't got time to do all that. I've got to go and do it. Yeah. But this is the hamster's mm -hmm. wheel. You're not in control. You are not taking the emotional responsibility for your life. You're letting life, you are becoming, in my terms, reactive instead of proactive. And then it's a very small step from being reactive to becoming the victim to becoming poor me, to becoming the world's against me, everyone's against me, the people don't realise, they keep on piling things on me, it's one thing after another, after another, after another, and then here's and another carousel. And this is why it's complicated, it's very difficult. I often get this image in my head when I'm working with a client like this, it's like a big ball of, I don't know, spaghetti or wool, and you have to pull out each strand and talk about it because over the years it's become so intertwined and they they lose, this is what they say, they lose their what I call ye intention. What is it that they want out of life? What is it they're working towards? What's their travel? What's their journey? What's their roadmap? Whatever you want to call it, they lose that and they get caught up in the minutiae of day to day, next thing comes in, oh my God, I've got it, oh, I haven't got, oh, and I've left this, oh, and I haven't got, and it's like, it's like a tennis match or a table tennis match, you're, you're hitting the ball back and you're not taking control. And then, as I said, when I spoke to this one client about taking control, she says she hasn't got time to take control because she's caught into this thing. This is why in many videos, I, I try and explain, Take a breath, drop your shoulders. You know, the world is not going to stop turning. The sun is going to come up tomorrow. People are not going to suddenly fall out of love with you. You are not going to be exposed or find out as a fraud or an imposter. All of these are images that your mind has imagined. Take a breath, hold that position. Now, if you do not control your life, who do you want to control your life? Because if you want this magic fairy godmother to come whisking in mm -hmm. and wave her wand and sort out your diary, it's not <laughs> going to happen. Well, I think, David, um, what you've just said about almost this lady wanting to avoid doing 10 minutes of planning in order to have a more an, a well-planned day, a more structured week, a more structured day so that she has some time for rest and relaxation. There is a kind of uh, an avoidance there. And for those, so there's those people, I guess, who are keeping themselves busy, overworking themselves, reaching burnout because they're on this drive for perfection, the drive to fulfill an imaginary role that they've created for themselves or they've over promised stuff to too many people. But also, I would imagine there's a lot of people who find it difficult to fully rest, fully relax, because they, if they do that, it's almost like they don't want to spend time with themselves. They're avoiding spending time with themselves in their own head because they don't want to start thinking about stuff which is going to upset them, or because they... So I tell you a bigger or... Yeah, what other people think of me. Yeah, so people will judge them for resting. People will judge them and they're think they're lazy. lazy. Exactly, lazy. Alex. Lazy, okay. They, they are worried about what other people may think about them, that they're not a good mother, that they're not a good wife, that they're not a good employee, that they're not meeting their standards. And so they're, they're living to other people's, the faceless jury, I call mm -hmm. it. Who are these people that you are listening to? Who are they? The next door neighbor, the person over the road, the person at work, the person you pass in the street. And they're very worried about what they think. We call this CCJ, criticizing, comparing, being judgmental. And so they create this 
kind of self-fulfilling prophecy that we call the carousel of despair, that they, that they use this as a driver mm -hmm. to drive them on. Because, and then this becomes, goes back to your first point then, this becomes so familiar, so normal, is you know what? That they absolutely do not think they deserve to drop their shoulders and to rest and to put their feet up. Other people do, but not them. Again, I said to my client, well, what's the difference between them coming home from work, from a hard day's work and putting the feet up, and you putting your feet up? Well, it's my responsibility to do the meal. Well, why isn't it their responsibility? Well, I've always done it. Well, why don't you address these issues and sort mm -hmm. out your day more? And this is why it seems, oh, crikey, I could talk forever on this because I hear this every day. This is another thing I hear. Well, it's easier. It's easier just to carry on in the same way. To keep busy and burn out. And I'm saying it's easier yeah. to burn out. Well, I don't want to burn out. Yeah. But doing it means you're going to burn out. Yes, but I want to find a way where I can do everything and be perfect and everybody likes me without burning out. Well, good luck with that mm -hmm. because that's not going to happen because you know what I think happens? After a while, your bodies keep on telling you, keeps on speaking to you to slow down, take a rest. You ignore, you ignore, you ignore, you carry on. And then I think what the body does is goes, well, okay, I'll switch off. That will stop you. And I think in some ways, some of my clients almost want that to happen because illness is a good excuse. So physical illness gives them permission yes. to finally rest, to finally not have to work hard to prove themselves. For some clients, okay. I think that that physical Ill, illness is <clears throat> something that they will accept that they can stop. Yeah, because in our society... Uh, it, people will accept physical illness and the, and the need to rest because of f physical illness much more readily than needing to emotionally rest and relax. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, thankfully, it's changing now. But you and know, can, and, and can I just put the proviso on? We are not talking about everybody. Yeah. We are just giving you trends that I've yeah. come across. So please, if you're sitting there and this doesn't apply to you, don't get steam coming out of your ears. I'm just giving you trends that I see after 40 years of working with people. Yeah. And this is one of the trends. When you're physically ill, then for the first time, you have a justification to rest. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying don't let it get to that yeah. situation. Yeah. Yeah, and, and take the early warning signs yes. from your body rather than pushing yourself right to the limit when you start to feel tired, rest. Yeah. You know, examine the roles and responsibilities you've yes. taken on. Think about practical ways that you can delegate, practical ways that there are uh, to prioritize what's most important here, what's least important here that I can let go of. And all of these are very practical time management, running your calendar, doing a a really successful to-do list. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but a lot of my clients, when I suggest a to-do list, they go, oh my God, that's the last thing I want. If you see my to-do list, there's about a thousand things to do on there. And they keep on adding. So it's not realistic. Mm -hmm. And this is what I want you to be, is a realistic optimist. Mm -hmm. you, we live in a reality. It's not good to keep on piling things on your to-do list when there's no chance you're going to do them because that just adds weight. I, I can tell you a lot of my clients, when, when I help them to fill out a time management diary, they, the number one thing they do wrong is this you underestimate time it takes. They fill in, well, <laughs> do, 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 you know, the, the one lady said to, to take the, the children to school, she put 10 minutes. I said, it takes 10 minutes to take the children to school. She said, no, it takes about an hour. I said, why did you put 10 minutes then? She said, well, that's what I'd like it to take. Yeah. Well, this is the thing we underestimate and undervalue some of the things we do, and we then cram more into our day than we need to. Absolutely. But David, for those people who are just keeping busy for the sake of keeping busy, yeah. so because they, they don't want to rest and relax um, because they are procrastinating about... Um, addressing something that is actually important in their life. So they're creating busyness 
in other areas of their life that they can refocus on or for those people who don't want to rest and relax because they're avoiding spending quiet time with themselves and actually that makes them uncomfortable. Yes. What, what advice can you offer here? Yes, so for, for people who are being busy as an avoidance, mm -hmm. then you've got to look at your techniques of confronting. Remember there's a big difference between confronting issues and confrontation. Confrontation means two people, one of them has to lose their temper, raise their voice. Confronting means that you go and deal with the issue in front of you. And so many of my clients, rather than confronting difficult situations with partners, with bosses, at work, with family, with friends, they will then create the avoidance of being overly busy. And it won't work because the issue that you have to address doesn't suddenly disappear because you're doing something else. In my understanding, it gets worse. So I have to try and coach and teach and support my clients to learn how to confront without confrontation, without raising their voice. And if somebody else raises their voice or loses their temper, that they have the ability, the skill, the technique to have that inner calmness. And this is why I'm a great believer in meditation. And I'm not saying meditation where people misunderstand you're emptying your mind or sitting in a darkened room cross-legged. I'm talking about the meditation of focusing and being in control of your mind. You know, I try and say on each of our videos, two core teachings of the Wu Wei Wisdom model. You are the creator of your emotions. You are not the victim. Number two, what we're talking about now, you control your mind. Your mind does not control you. And meditation for me is learning number two, learning how to control your mind. And when you can do this successfully, it doesn't matter if the people, person opposite you is raging, raging, steam coming out of their ears, eyes on springs. You can be calm, still, focused, on point, realistic, authentic, displaying who you really are with truth, honesty, and integrity. Now, I understand that that takes a bit of practice. I'm not saying you can do that today or tomorrow, but I am saying you can do it. It is achievable because it is something that you can learn how to do. And that's what I would call meditation. So when you're avoiding, do the golden thread, find out what you're avoiding, and then we have to find a plan that you can confront, deal with that issue. So, David, I would imagine that in terms of confronting, so you've talked about confronting uh, situations which involve other people that we may be trying to avoid, um, therefore creating this artificial busyness in our life. But for some people, it's about confronting issues within ourselves. So. Yes. Um, things that are creating lots of red light feelings with us, lots of painful or uncomfortable emotions and feelings within us that we don't want to sit still because it's like it's going to open up a can of worms. We're going to have to face up to this problem. So that's why people create artificial busyness in their life or they bury themselves in their work or they bury themselves in hobbies, anything, or bury themselves in going to the gym and keeping crazy physically active because they're avoiding addre addressing uh, an emotional issue or upset within themselves. And so the same golden thread process question. technique applies. If the, I guess if the prospect or if you try to sit down and relax for half an hour or an hour and the thought of doing that or when you try to do that, all of a sudden you get these uncomfortable red light feelings, whether it's fidgeting, fidgeting, I can't even say the word, whether you, whether you become very fidgety, whether you start strategizing about other things, whether you start to get any form of red light feelings, to do the golden thread process and ask yourself, what am I thinking right now that is, is creating these feelings, that is stopping me from relaxing, that is stopping me from being right here, right now in the present moment with my thinking? And then follow the, that thought 
those thoughts, that self-talk down, ask the why question we teach in the Golden Thread process to get down to the core belief about what you're thinking right now, whether it's something you're avoiding, something that you're wrongly believing about yourself, that you're lazy, that you should be doing this to be a good mother, you should be doing this to be a good uh, boss, you should be doing this to be a good father or friend. There is a core belief issue you're trying to avoid. I, I would say what you've just explained is so important and that's why the golden thread. Please look at a couple of videos. Please join our Facebook community. You see people writing it down there. It's so helpful when you do that because you see the process. And then you get down to those core beliefs as Alex said. Remember the three core beliefs. Let me repeat them to you. Have you ever said this to yourself? I'm not good enough. I can't cope. I'm unlovable or I'm unworthy. If you've said those three things to yourself, you have a lie. I call it a lie. It is not the truth. And then ask yourself, like I always ask my clients, please give me the evidence why you're not good enough, un unworthy, can't cope. Give me the evidence. Don't give me the outcome and the results of thinking that. Give me the evidence why you think that. And I will almost guarantee you it will be what somebody said or what you interpreted from their actions, the way they looked at you, the way they acted. And that is the foundation that's forming your emotional mm -hmm. education. And this is why we are focusing on this overexertedness and tiredness is your emotional side. Mm -hmm. This is so important to get that right. And if you're avoiding, it is not Alex used a term there, I don't know whether you heard that, I hear it all of the time, a can of worms. You know what I found? Here's what I found after 45 years of doing this. I've never found a can of worms, never ever. I've never found monsters. I've never found demons. What I found is a can of butterflies. I found an inner child stuck, frozen, stuck stuck hard, doing one thing because that's the only thing they know how to do. And this child is begging for education. It's begging for support. It's begging for understanding. And that's when I go down, it's show them love, compassion. I listen to what they're saying. I offer them alternatives. I hold their hand. We're talking about this inner child work. Mm -hmm. It's a child of about six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's not a monster. Somebody that needs to be hand held and guided gently through. Of course, they're not going to do exactly what you do. You wouldn't expect a child to do it. But they're not stupid. Your inner child is not stupid. It needs help, mm -hmm. guidance, compassion. It needs to be shown the way to do it. And so, David, would you say that if we have these core lies, these misunderstandings within our belief system about who we are, about what the world's like, whether it's fair or unfair, whether we have to be perfect, whether we have to prove ourselves, whether we have to get validation, if we're on this kind of treadmill, if the inner child is on full blast and we're ignoring it. We ignore it through avoiding. We ignore it by driving ourselves per for perfection. We ignore it through overworking ourselves. We ignore it by ignoring the signs that our body's giving us that we are tired, that we're burnt out. Mm -hmm. and, and this is all the manifestation. This yep. is the top level manifestation of the deeper issues, the inner child issues, the core belief issues that need to be addressed. Desperately need to be addressed. So again, working with a client just yesterday, the world is not against you. This client's belief is the world is against me. Everything I try goes wrong. It doesn't matter how hard I work. In fact, I have to work harder. And she's on the treadmill then, and she's now working harder and harder. And then she becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. It doesn't work out. And then she throws up her hands and says, there you go. Remember, when we're addressing this, we're just addressing the emotional side of it. I believe that it's the most powerful side, not the only side, but the most powerful side.
And if you don't get this bit right, mm -hmm. then of course you may have to change your diet, you may have to change your exercise, your sleeping patterns. But if you don't get this core bit right, mm -hmm. then the others can't get right. Well, it's like a row of dominoes. Yeah, I think everything, a lot pivots off the emotional mm. health side because if we don't value our self-worth, if we don't uh, want to nurture ourselves enough to allow ourselves to rest and relax because we we appreciate how important that is to us, then that we're also more likely to neglect our diet. We're also more likely to neglect be neglectful in our lifestyle choices Miss in terms signs. of, um, you know, smoking, drink too much, drinking too much, going out partying too much, not exercising enough. So it's all intertwined, but the impact is... Or not going out at all. Yeah, not going out at all, Nothing. exactly. So when, we, when we've when we dealt with these core issues, when we've rebalanced ourselves into a more authentic perception of who we are, what who we are already, that we are lovable, that we are enough, that we can manage. Are you then saying that all these kind of drivers for busyness, all these things that are blocking us from resting and relaxing, relaxing as we need to, just fall away? No, what I'm saying is then you become emotionally self-responsible. Okay. And can I just say a word and a thank you for my client in Switzerland. I always used to say, and you look back the video, self-responsible because I'm meant emotionally self-responsible and she quite rightly said to me David I am a very responsible person I left home when I was 18 I've been to university I've run my own career and she's absolutely right when I say self-responsible I mean emotionally self-responsible so when you are emotionally self-responsible for yourself and not looking for other people to stroke you or to give you that reassurance or that validation then you can start to take responsibility for your life and your emotions. You will then be more realistic in what you can do and how you can do it. When you are emotionally self-responsible, you are more liable to say to somebody, I can't do that today. Put in place boundaries, exactly. authentic boundaries. Thank yeah. you, Alex. That's exactly what we're saying. Because you are not worried about what they're going to think about you and think you're lazy or not good enough or whatever, whatever, whatever. All of the stuff mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that builds up all this tiredness because you would just be honest, emotionally self-responsible. You have to look after your emotions. No one else can do that for you. And this is the key. This is the key that will change and unlock this. Yes, you may also have to look after your diet. You may have to exercise less, better, more, whatever. There are other factors. But if you can get this root mm -hmm. core baseline right, then the rest will start to fall into place much easier. And I think as well, David, that... You know, you once you're emotionally self-responsible and emotionally self-aware in the way that we've talked about, you have a better appreciation that, of course, you still need to do things. You still need to give out. There are there may be people depending on your support, Absolutely. but you have a better appreciation that you can't give out. You can't keep on giving if your cup is empty. Absolutely. So you have to take the time to re rest and recharge yourself before you can give your best to others for those who do need your support. So the Taoist teaching on this is that the chi, the life force, the energy, whatever you want to call it, flows through you first and then out. It doesn't, you don't direct it to other people so you hope to get it back. It flows through you first and then out. This is not selfish because you are not holding on to it. You're not flowing through you and saying it's not moving any further. It's flowing through you and out. And here's the saying, it's wonderful to be of service, but make sure you have something to serve. It's no good going with an empty tray. So you have to nourish, care, take, look after yourself first, that we call in our model Qiang, self-care, self-nourishment, so you have something to serve. This is the direction of travel. 
looking after yourself first so you can look after your children, so you can do your job, so you can look after your friends and your family, so you can plan realistically, so you can do that. This is not selfish. And what contaminates that is when the energy goes the other way and you're more worried about what other people think and are saying about you. Remember, what other people think of you is none of your business because you will never control it. You could be Superman, Superwoman, and they will still find fault in you. They will still talk about you behind your back. They will still say something about you. So if you want to spend your life dancing around to their tune, then that's what makes you tired because you will never stop dancing. Why don't you dance to your own tune? Why don't you nourish and care for yourself? Why don't you take that emotional self-responsibility for you? Mm, brilliant. Thank you, David. And we've also produced a full-length um, MP3 teaching album on this teaching of Chiang, the, the Taoist art of self-nurturing and self-nourishing. And I'll put a link in the video description below to that. So, David, Obviously, there's a lot of deeper work here to undo this constant, this habit we have, this constant choice we're making to keep ourselves busy for all the deep-seated, belief-driven reasons we've talked about. But in terms of practical things we can do in the moment, so yes, we'll do, we need to do the deeper self-inquiry work using the golden thread process. But in the moment, if I find myself, I've got a few hours off, and I know I need to rest, relax and recharge. What are the little tips or exercises I can do to help keep myself present, grounded into the moment rather than thinking ahead, thinking busyness? Well, I would, I would like to promote meditation. I am such a great believer in meditation. And I think so many people have got the wrong idea of meditation. They think it's something they have to study for years or become a Buddhist or sit cross-legged or in a darkened room or watch a candle or do some kind of religious practice. For me, what I want to pass to you is meditation is the art of learning how to control your mind. So therefore, you can meditate walking the dog. You can meditate doing your craft work, cooking. Cooking is a great way to meditate. You can meditate sitting quietly, lying down, doing qigong, doing yoga, doing tai chi. And it's a learning the skill of controlling your mind. We've done several free, they're on YouTube, guided meditations. Try those. Listen to some, listen to me if you don't mind my voice. Listen to me guiding you through. If you don't like my voice, there's plenty more. Start small. I would say, I think our meditations are about 10, 15 minutes. Don't do an hour, do 10, 15 minutes. If you're walking the dog, put the ear pieces in and just try and get your posture right and walk. And those little steps, because you're changing a pattern of a lifetime. And remember, habit. Habit is just a choice that you set on default. Look at all your habits. Take responsibility. You can change those. You have got time to click in a couple of earphones when you're taking the children to school or digging the garden mm -hmm. or making lunch or dinner and just check your breathing. That's a very good way. But you're taking control of your mind. You're not letting your mind run around like some headless chicken. You're in control of yeah, it. Yeah, and I think, David, for many of us, we're so used to allowing the mind, the ego to drag us into the future, ruminating on the past rather than being focused in the present. So just that simple practice of trying out a guided meditation or a quiet mindfulness exercise whenever you've got some free time mm. every day, that will start to retrain oh. you into the habit of bringing yourself, your attention into the present moment. Yep. It may feel a bit awkward or clunky at first. You may get an inner resistance from the inner child, but with a little bit of application and practice, it starts to become easier to stop creating busyness and enjoying being in the present moment. And you'll experience the benefits almost immediately. Do, do something like a time management. Find seven meditations that you enjoy from different pe people and give yourself the promise that for one week, I'm going to listen every day to one of these meditations. Then at the end of the week, be honest. Did it help you? 
If it didn't help you, then write in and tell me why yeah. it didn't help you. I'd be happy to answer that yeah. question. What was you doing? Why didn't it help you? So it doesn't have to be my meditations, anybody. There's plenty of free yeah. stuff on, on YouTube and SoundCloud, free. You can just download it. Listen to one a day for seven days and see what you think how it's affected you. Are you more in control? Have you allowed to give yourself that 15, 10, 15 minutes a day? And what benefit has that given you? Yeah, and then, I mean, it's developing and cultivating this healthy habit of self-nurturing and really appreciating what are the benefits of doing that for for you, but then in terms of what you can actually get done in your life. And as David said, we've done lots of free guided meditations on our YouTube channel, and we've done some teaching videos as well on how to do simple meditation practice and some Q and A's there. So I will put links to those in the video description below. I really hope this video has given you some insight and some powerful takeaways. If you can relate to anything we've discussed or want to share what's been the most important takeaway for, for you, please do comment in the video description below. You know we always love to hear from you and answer your questions. David works one-to-one -one by a video call with clients all over the world with these on these sorts of issues every week. So I will put a link in the video description below if you'd like to learn more about that. And we also produce new videos every week. So please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell notifications button so you get a little notification email every time we produce a new video. We look forward to seeing you all very soon. Bye-bye.